Decision making is extremely reliable. The same questions come up again and again, so I'm here to explain everything that you need to know as well as a free cheat sheet which will be linked in the description down below. On my channel I also have loads of other videos on the UCAT as well as free cheat sheets for every single subtest on the UCAT. And I also make loads of content on things like how to get into dental school, day in the life of a dental student because I'm now a fourth year, as well as productivity tips. So if those are things that you're interested in make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss out on another video and let's get into it. So there are around 29 questions which need to be answered in 31 minutes and this gives you roughly around 66 seconds per question. Now it's the least time pressured section in the UCAT but there are loads of confusing Venn diagrams and stuff like that that you need to account extra time for. So each question is individual unlike some other UCAT subtests that we've seen like SJT where you can have one scenario and many questions following it. This is one passage and one question each. So let's go through the different question types. I've split them up into around six sections and the first one is logical puzzles. So I'll show you an example here but basically there are a series of statements in which you have to infer some data from it and they usually don't come with a diagram or a table. So my first tip I have for you is to use shorthand when using the whiteboard to come to conclusions really quickly with decision making and I'll be showing you an example over here but it really helps to basically get rid of all the confusing words and break it down into simple facts that you have and it makes it easier to find the data from this. I think it would be really useful for you to see how I answered these questions and my process of thinking through these questions so I'll be doing walkthroughs on all of the UCAT subtitles tests so that should be coming out soon make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out and adding to that when you do a question and you're not able to finish it because either it was too confusing or you ran out of time keep your working out on the whiteboard just in case you do have time to come back to it so flag it and move on like with a lot of decision making these logical puzzles will come up again and again and they all sound very similar so once you've done a couple of them and you're more familiar with them I think you'll be a lot better adapted to doing them and your speed will just improve by proxy keeping in mind that I always recommend that whenever you do these more and stuff like that you always go back under untimed pressure and you figure out where you went wrong figure out how you could have done it better and what kind of trips you up was it the wording of the sentence was it the type of question where you're not able to get the information quickly or is it timing pacing all of that stuff and with logical puzzles if you're choosing to do an educated guess it can be really helpful to immediately eliminate the false answers first and finally I always recommend that whenever you're sorting out you're working out with these logical puzzles you start by writing down the relevant information first and then you can work your way backwards and pinpoint where all the information is and this way you avoid working out all of the elements that are not required because they do sometimes add in additional information that's not necessary just to confuse it a little bit so syllogisms is another type of question and basically there's a passage and around five conclusions and you have to see whether the conclusions match up with a passage and this type of question is very time consuming so you have to be careful but the thing is so if you get all five statements correct then you get two marks if you get four of them right you get one mark and if you get three of them right you get zero so it really is worth spending a little bit extra time on this because it's not hard it's just once like again with all the other questions once you do it a few more times you get familiar with them and you understand what they want you to say and you get much better at it. So Medic Hero has a really really good video on how to answer these using the arrow method so basically the arrows would look something like this and using this example as a question it says that not all people present at the lit festival were poets so the arrow would look something like this then all poets at the lit festival were authors so that would look something like this and then some poets were not writers. So it would look like this and you would join it all together and it can look like this. And that's very good for syllogisms because it helps you make connections and it basically uses facts. So you can compare this equation against each of your statements and it would be really easy to come to a conclusion. So make sure you check out that video because Medic Hero has loads of other really good videos that you might want to check out. Another tip I have for you is to make sure you check out the language that is used. So a lot of them have things like always, none, except, some, all of that stuff. And there is an official UCAT definition table which I'll show you later on in this video. With these kinds of questions they will trip you up by having you use your assumptions. So avoid bias, avoid assumptions, opinions, all of that. Stick to your facts and come to a facts based conclusion. So the next type of question is interpreting data. They can come at you with all types of things like tables, charts and graphs. You can use simple math techniques, things like rounding up numbers and estimation to make it quicker to answer these questions. And similar to the other questions, there is going to be a lot of irrelevant data in the question full of like lines and graphs and numbers that you don't need. So make sure you focus on the relevant info and this will help you save time by not doing extra calculations that you don't need. So with Venn diagram questions, there are two types that you can get. There is one like this where you're given a Venn diagram and you're asked to extract some info from it or you're given a series of statements or facts and you're asked to choose out of like a multiple choice of Venn diagrams which one correctly represents it. The tricky thing around 
Venn diagrams is that there is a lot of confusing information there's a lot of information and they also do crazy shapes which just confuses you even more and again like all the other questions make sure you're familiar with Venn diagrams and used to using them because practice is key and the best tip I have for you is to take it one shape at a time to not get overwhelmed because that's literally what they're asking for and the last tip I have for you is especially for type 2 questions read the information really carefully and you can eliminate Venn diagrams straight from the get-go and that will hopefully help you save some time so with probability questions the first thing that will improve your probability probability is just knowing the basics of probability. There are things about like mutually exclusive and independent events and I'll have like a little diagram over here of the different equations but it's really simple stuff. You don't need complex maths equations or knowledge to do this kind of stuff. You just need to be familiar with it and know what and and or and stuff like this means. All of this should be included in my free cheat sheet so make sure you check out the description down below. And with strongest argument questions these are definitely the weirdest in UCA but there are strategies that you can use to answer these questions effectively and quickly. You're basically given a statement and four associated arguments and you have to choose the strongest argument which closely relates to the statement. The main tip here is you need to base it as much as you can on fact. No bias, no opinions, no assumptions, none of that. You have to base it on the facts and as closely like statistically related. If it's opinionated, it's out the door. You want the argument to directly link back to the statement. Obviously like with all of the other questions, I tell you just exposure is key, so practice, practice, practice. I thought it would also be really helpful for me to give you some of the average UK cat decision making scores over the last few years so you know what to aim for. So my first tip to score high is actually basic algebra will help you so so much with decision making. So especially when you have spatial equations that look like this or just in general like I said the shorthand way of writing things down it will really help you to substitute like shapes for letters and stuff like that or making a table like this because it would be so so helpful to get to the answer quickly to see the relevant info in a way that makes sense there aren't all these confusing words and stuff like that another tip that's really helpful is that in a lot of these questions there is usually like a key bit of information that will unlock all of the like give you a clue for all of the answers in the question medic mind did a whole video on this so i'll link that in the description down below which you should check after you finish watching this video and in the same way when you look at a question and a certain name or a place is repeated again and again this usually means that it has a lot more data around it so it's usually the easiest to derive facts from and easiest to start with another thing to be aware of is because the subtest doesn't have strict timing like some other of the subtests like VR you really need to be diligent with your pacing and your timing because it's very easy to get caught on one question and it, for it to take way longer than you expected then you're running late on the other questions you don't have enough time to read the passage and we know how that goes <laughs> and something that you can use to save time is to use some keyboard shortcuts so I have a free cheat sheet over here and I'll have it linked down in the description. You only know yourself the best so know which questions take you longer and recognize that you need to flag these questions. A lot of DM questions look a lot more complex than they are but you need to be able to figure out which ones you're gonna flag and which ones you're gonna spend a lot longer on and by all means if you have more time come back to it at the end. And because there are so many different types of questions in DM I think it's very important for you to make sure you're familiar with all of them, you know how to work with graphs and charts and pie charts and stuff like that so you're ready for the exam and nothing catches you off guard. In this section I think it's so so important to make sure you're reading the passage really carefully because for example with syllogism questions one word that you misread then that's a whole two marks gone. So here is a table of definitions that's from the official UCAT website and I thought this would be really helpful because some of the words like sum, so sum should mean anything that's greater than zero but not zero and it's very mind-boggling and they are very specific with these things so as long as you know how to tackle these things and what they want you to answer you will be better off for the exam. And there are other words like majority which means more than 50, minority which means less than 50, less than 10 means anything under 10 including zero and also things like qualifiers so must never all of that stuff which you need to be aware of in questions then well that's all from me it's a very simple subtest and you just need to get familiar with it the questions aren't that hard once you understand what they're asking from you you'll be much better off in this subtest if you have any questions or need any help from me make sure you comment down below or dm me on instagram and i'll be happy to help make sure you download those free cheat sheets as well otherwise make sure you check out my other content on my channel things like how to get into dental school day in the life of dental student and productivity tips so if those are things you're interested in make sure you subscribe down below and yeah i'll see you soon bye